at the thoughts then of Lisa and Roger. Starting, in fact, with the words of uh, Theresa May in various newspapers, not least the top of the Telegraph there, migration is harming society. It leads the Times as well. The and Times uh, this too, is yeah. a prelim to tomorrow. And um, I was... Uh, Lisa was saying earlier, this is sort of Theresa May actually going slightly off the reservation here. It's quite a hard-line speech. And is it, uh, it's not going to necessarily please the mainline uh, Conservative mm. uh, drive to slightly occupy the centre ground. On the other hand, she's saying something that a lot of people think. Yes. Uh, and it's got a quite if you like, central to the sort of public debate uh, yes. right now, and she's clearly positioning herself. Yes, I mean, that, there is already, there's so much talk around conference about the sort of jostling for position and people sort of runners and riders for the leadership, and you feel the sense that this is not a leak, I think this is a drop, as one might call yes, it, yes, of, yes, of, yes. The, of her hard lines that she's going to uh, say in the speech tomorrow. And they are putting her at odds with, with some others. It's particularly, um, the, the Times picks up particularly on mm -hmm. this um, idea that student numbers are in, currently included, and some in the, the more sort of conciliatory part, you might say, if the Tory party you want those taken out. Um, there's, there's, there's so much of a struggle over the numbers because, of course, the Tories famously haven't met Got their target. Mm. They're nowhere near, they're three times the target In the tens the of thousands. Migration. Mm. Yeah. Not in the hundreds of yeah, thousands. Yeah, the hundreds of thousands. So, um, obviously, it's a, it's a key area. Mm. Um, and at conferences yeah, where, yeah. you know, she, she's going to be sort of starting to mobilise and rally people yeah. behind her. It's a, it is a popular line, but it's... It's not. Um, it's quite a dynamic political story. I yes. mean, because immigration is very central. Clear, you know, famously, Jeremy Corbyn didn't say a word about it yeah. in his speech, and it's clearly uh, not bothering with yeah. that and trying to sort of yeah. capture the sort of yeah. left immigration. It's jolly good. For Apart us. from to express compassion uh, for the Syrian refugees. Yes, yes, yes compassion yes, and yes, yes. immigration, yes. migration. Yes. And, and unalloyed good. And I think that uh, mm. not necessarily. Is, is this that a Eurosceptic message? Do you think is she positioning herself in the battle slightly, for the referendum? Yeah, or, very or much not? slightly. The, the, the manoeuvring around mm. Europe is now mm. so kind of. Uh, Byzantine, it's quite difficult to see. Yes. I mean, what's clear is that Cameron, this is slightly off, uh, off, the, off the reservation again, is that Cameron cannot have a referendum which he's going to lose. No. So the, as soon as the danger comes in, he's going to lose. I think he'll be on to Angela saying, Angela, can you do me a favour mm. here? We need mm. to There's sort definitely, something out. We looked at the paper on Sunday about who's lining up on Europe. I mean, there are... You know, it's a wide division and getting mm, wider mm, within the party, mm, so mm. that's one to watch, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, well, the focus is obviously uh, Manchester, isn't it? And joining us for this pay-per-view Monday evening regulars as well. One enjoying Manchester, the other, of course, enduring. Uh, that is um, uh, the Daily Mail's consultant editor, Andrew Pearson. Kevin Maguire, associate editor of the Daily Mirror. Welcome to both of you. Um, Kevin's had a busy evening Hello. already because you've been hosting this Corbyn event, haven't you, as well? Um, seven, 8,000 people I, there. I, I... Should he have stayed away, do you think? No, well, he'd accepted the invitation when he was an obscure backbencher and he turned up anyway, but it was a fantastic event. Must have been nine, ten thousand people in all, both in and outside Manchester Cathedral. More than you'll get here for Cameron's uh, speech tomorrow. And, it, and whatever, wherever that uh, you know, Corbyn journey is going with that excitement, that enthusiasm he's generated among certain people, He's changing politics now. It's going to be an unpredictable ride. I can see him uh, pulling faces and uh, you know, shaking his head already. I mean, you won't get the, the reaction Corbyn got there with people. He's connected. You won't get it here behind the ring of steel and, the, and all the coppers. There's a lot of drunkenness here, but that's uh, as lively as they get. Can I tell you about these people yeah. that Kevin's warmly yeah. embracing? These are the people who are outside the conference no, every day shouting, no, and can I reveal exclusively, shouting at Kevin Maguire, Tory scum. He was appalled to be called Tory scum. And all I can say, half of it's true. Work out yeah, which half. Yeah. Look, look, the people outside there who are shouting at everybody and spitting at, uh, at some, they're not the people who are following Corbyn. They're not the people who are in Manchester Cathedral. Yes, they they're not the people outside. They're not the people who queue for the hours. The New Labour Party. No, they're not. This, it's New a politics. It's a complete political smear. Uh, not, a, not at all, it's quite separate, but this is pretty dead actually. They're very good at media manipulation here. This morning they, uh, they uh, briefed uh, Osborne's speech and uh, Andrew Adon is doing the infrastructure uh, job. Tomorrow they were already briefing Theresa May saying something's got to be done about immigration. Uh, hello, you've been Home Secretary, Theresa, five and a half years. It's gone up under you and it's more than you inherited from Labour. Uh, hello, Theresa. 
It's as if she's just arrived from planet Zog and uh, discovered there's a, a problem. It's amazing how he just skated over the fact right. the Chancellor delivered a very well-delivered speech, talked about giving huge powers to local authorities that they've never had before. Yeah. Business rates, finally, the local councils will control them. Big steps on pensions. Very important speech, nicking the centre yeah. ground because his lot have fallen centre off the edge ground. of the left of the ground. There's nothing centre ground about George Osborne. He's a right-wing extremist. He could only give a passing reference to tax credits because he poses as the champion of working uh, Britain, the blue blood who's cared about the blue collar, he's cutting, he's cutting their incomes. He can be the only Chancellor ever. He's such a brilliant genius, this And bloke. if you look at the he papers... He can raise the minimum wage and it reduces people's incomes. Yeah, sorry to butt in. Yeah, I mean, George, George, George sorry, yeah, sorry, Anna. No, no, no. <laughs> he thinks... <laughs> yes, well done. Thank you very much. Um, George Osborne doesn't really get on the front pages at all. It is, in fact, on the sidelines, the comments made by Jeremy Hunt, the health secretary, about trying to make us work mm. like the Chinese. Tax credits allow this cultural shift. The, the, uh, the Daily Mirror here it will make poor Brits work like the Chinese to give them self-respect yeah, and well, dignity. It, 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 tactless, uh, it's a blunder and he's normally quite sure-footed. Of course he's married to a Chinese woman too mm. and he's quickly and swiftly put a statement out yeah. saying he's been misinterpreted. When politicians say they've been misinterpreted, what they mean is they put their foot right in it. There is no worse sound in British politics than, than a Kevin silver Maguire. spoon than millionaire Kevin Maguire. Tory peering down from his ivory tower <laughs> at the workers and dripping contempt, which is what he did. Uh, I'm showing the eye as well. It's all over the papers, actually. Work like the Chinese. Uh, the Indy, work like the Chinese, not surprisingly. The Guardian also going, hunt welfare cuts, encourage harder work. Do you think the tax credits issue yep. is one of those issues that the Conservative Party uh, perhaps wishes it had slowed down on? Uh, well, I think this be it's be starting to become an issue. Uh, the, the Prime Minister said on Sunday it wasn't, but I think we'll see this, the, 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 a, a gentle retreat somewhat on this. By the time we get back to Parliament next week, I think they'll have moved quite a long way on this because a lot of Tory MPs I've spoken to here think this could cause them quite some difficulty because these are the strivers who the Tories want to help, that they will, in fact, be hitting in the pocket. So I think there will be some movement on this, uh, and that's why there was a lot of big announcements today to completely distract from that story. Yeah, distract. Look, there's going to be a retreat. It's got to be a £4 billion retreat. David Cameron, before the election, said he wouldn't touch tax credits. It's one of his 20 broken promises or whatever whatever the total is now. It's probably going up every every day. I mean, it's appalling, actually, because they do say they're going to champion uh, blue-collar Britain, and then they kick them in the wallets. Yeah. I mean, mm. it's it's kind of there's a, there's a, there's a, there was a yeah I'm, I'm very controlled there is a, there is there is there is, there is an hypocrisy <laughs> with in what they say in there and then what they do and people don't like that and quite rightly they get up early they stay up late they go to work and then you've got George Osborne grabbing your tax credit while you've got Jeremy Hunt saying come on you've got to work um, a lot harder people work hard now Anna do you think yeah. he's auditioning to join that mob Maguire because he's doing quite well uh, what your Tory your mob, mob I could be in your Tory that mob, mob I've, got, I've got a heart mate am right. I seeing you later you this week mate. yeah am I seeing you later yeah. this week Wednesday yeah can't Double wait, Anna. <laughs> you can't wait for him. Love to Lisa, oh, love to Lisa and Roger. Yeah. <laughs> I love them so dear. Bye. Right. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> Take him off. Um, you were nodding your head there when you said that there's got to be movement on tax credits. It, it, it doesn't necessarily sing with the message. Does it, it doesn't sing with the message that you're doing. You, uh, George, I was one talking about. We mm. are now the party of Labour. Which is a skillful use of words, but yes. saying we're the party of sort of working people. We are the builders. We are the builders. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are the builders. I'm in high vis jacket. We are the builders, <laughs> and it doesn't it doesn't tally with that. And they've yeah. got to just shift slightly because it's not. And there are obviously a lot of senior Tories who also think there's got to be some yeah. kind of movement. Well, the Institute mm. for Fiscal Studies saying that you know whatever it's three million mm. families yeah. are going to be worse off. You know that's a very very yeah. cool headed analysis. Well, working, which you can't, working families yes, too. Working, working families, families, which you can't sort of skate over. And then of course mm. at the other extreme. You've got Jeremy Hunt's unfortunate uh, comments, you know. So at both ends, you know, the message is not great. So yes, mm. you know, I mean, he was got just to trying to say that, that. Uh, if you earn all your own money, you have more dignity, yes. and you might be therefore more productive. Yes, kind of what he was trying to say. I have a lot of sympathy yeah. with what Jeremy Hunt's saying, and I mean, there is a. An issue around pro British productivity. I mean, we are yeah. so we are so low on a sort of you know, sure. European chart. I mean, way below yeah. France, for example, in terms of uh, productivity. So, I mean, whether that's is that a matter? But it's is, only is two weeks ago that George Osborne was in China, sort of saying, 
isn't everything terrific? Let's not mention the human rights. You know, of the workers. That, I mean, you know, it's sort mm. of China is probably something they should. Let's uh, not talk about let's, China. Let's, at let's, not, let's, let's not get talk. back to safer areas <laughs> like Europe. You know. Mm. <laughs> um, let's go to other matters for the moment, shall we? As well, down the bottom of the Telegraph, an interesting story: tougher sentences for thieves who steal phones with treasured photos. I confess, I am one of those with treasured photos on my phone. Um, is this, is this necessary? And, and how do you prove that you've got treasured photos on your phone well, when it's this gone is, missing? This is very difficult. This is the Sentencing Council talking about, you know, a sort of scale of, of sentencing for different crimes. And I can understand why you might try to legislate for crimes which are, have a more of an emotional impact. But photographs on a mobile phone, I think, is quite difficult. As we were saying earlier, one person's photograph of their cat, they might say, that's my most treasured thing on my mobile mm. phone. Someone else might say, well, it's the phone mother, the phone, you know, the phone number of my mother's care home or something. I mean, you know, it's not mm. just mm. photographs. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it, let's get real, it's a little mm. bit... There are know, quite it's a bit daft. There are other interesting aspects. The Times got a little story, uh, again, about this, uh, mm -hmm. about the emotional impact of crime, yeah. which I think is quite yes, worthwhile. I agree. And this is people nicking stuff from war memorials, yes. uh, oh. metal from war memorials, which I think is absolutely shocking. Yeah. Yeah, yes. A horrific the, crime and uh, uh, tough as sentence. Yes, you death. can't just assume that a, you know, something like a physical crime is the only way in which there's an emotional impact. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I have, like you, I have sympathy for it. But I think a, a thief who looked through my photographs would probably have Fall suffered asleep. enough. You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just very quickly as well, also a story on the front page. Biggest tuna firm breaks promise to save dolphins. Well, this is a fantastic... I think it's a fantastically good story. I, I haven't seen it anywhere else. I assume it's exclusive. And this is John West, who was a subject of a rather good slogan about 500 yes. years ago. It's the uh, fish the, the, that John uh, West, West rejects that the, makes John... Uh, West the best. Gosh, that's like and a tongue twister. No, it is yeah. now entirely... Which, uh, a northern th uh, company, certainly. It's now owned, obviously, like everything else, but... Yeah by Thailand, yeah. by some mm -hmm. giant conglomerate in Thailand. And they had made a pledge that they were going to use Poland line to catch their tuna, mm. which sounds like mm -hmm. a bit of angling, but yeah. I assume it's rather more complex mm. than that. But it, it meant that other, you know, uh, species we love, like uh, turtles and... Yeah. Um, Sharks, but uh, even just other fish, you know, immature fish, fish yeah. which, you know, yeah. then can't be, you know, this whole idea of discards and sure. in fishing is And they're now going to be problem. swept up in the nets. Yeah. And yeah. I think it's absolutely... And it is absolutely shocking. I mean, at times it's very good on wildlife, actually. Yeah. Uh, they've said that only, you know, what they've discovered is that John West, I think, for four years has been saying, we're doing this pole and line, mm, we mm, are mm, totally committed to this. Mm. By 2017, you know, we're going to be absolutely covered in glory. We're, 100%. We're, 100%. Yeah. Um, it now turns out that only 2% mm. of their catch is done in this slightly more ethical way. So it's not as if yeah, it's yeah. something that they're going to say, we're going to renege on the steel. They have already yeah. not been doing the no, correct No, no, quite. You hope they'll need a bigger boat. As, <laughs> as it were, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, we all know that line now. Lots more stuff to come, including reality TV just got edgier with a new South Coast hit. More on that to come. Welcome back. You're watching the press preview with me now, the editor of The Independent on Sunday, Lisa Markwell, and the former newspaper editor, Roger Alton. Welcome back to both of you. A uh, picture store on the front of The Guardian. Who he, if nobody recognises Well, him? I mean, I think probably a lot of people won't, but a lot of people, I mean, will, or I hope should, know the name because he's one of the greatest... Um, uh, writers mm -hmm. of the uh, last 25 years. So it's Henning Mankell, is Swedish, and he created this wonderful character, uh, the detective Valanda. Kurt Valander, yeah. played who was uh, with a great series by with starring Kenneth Branagh yes. and various other Brit great mm -hmm. British. Actors. It's also a great Swedish series because mm -hmm. obviously I prefer the Swedish one. You prefer the Swedish yeah. one with subtitles. Yeah. And but uh, and the Guardian, quite a, you know, it's a good sort of literary uh, paper, and they've they've done this very well. They've got Mark Lawson, who's a great cultural commentator. Uh, to write about it and uh, the influence of uh, Mankell and that sort of Scandi, mm. Scandinavian noir. Mm. We're sort seeing of stuff, so many of those now. On, all, yeah, uh, uh, on, mm. on, on all television channels all the time, including last night on the BBC where there was one. Yes, was it? It was a sort of baffling. It wasn't Scandi, it was British, but it had sort of baffling yes. theme to it. River. And, uh, that one. It's called uh, f from, dark, from the oh, yes. Dark or something. But um, he's uh, Henning Mankell, or Mankell, we're, never, we're not quite sure, um, wrote very movingly about. He, d he died of cancer, he was 67. Mm. He wrote very movingly, um, I think it was actually in The Guardian, about being ill and you know mm. sort of finishing a writing career and you know so it's it's rather fitting that he's he's given a sort of proper mm. you know proper prominence because he is influential mm. Um, the, his name, as you say, might not be familiar, but the character was mm. absolutely fantastic. And, and as, as Mark points out, that it, it's a sort of a stereotype. He's near alcoholic. He's divorced. He's got a shocking private life. Haunted should by, be a journalist. Haunted, should be a journalist. <laughs> um, much too respectable for a journalist. Haunted by the ghost of murders he's investigated. And it's a kind of an archetype of kind yes. of cop fiction. Yeah. But it was terribly, skillfully done by uh, Mankell. Very moving.
affecting, very yeah. affecting, mm -hmm. and it's sort of the influence that runs through a lot of stuff yeah. we see now. But I'm, having not seen the Swedish subtitle version, I'm hoping they will re-release it now. I hope they will. But I mean, for the Guardian, presumably, you know, they, they don't want to put a picture of a Tory uh, politician on the front page. As oh, well, I see. because you know the and papers are quite are yeah. quite dominated yeah. by, yeah. Uh, as they would okay. be during yeah. Tory yeah. party conference. So yeah. perhaps ah. that's got something Interesting. to do. Well, with it, yeah. you know. talking of which, let's just go back to that. We have touched on it already. Um, Chinese news near the headline, but you wanted to talk about the sort of the febrile atmosphere there and the protests. Well, really. what's, what's been really interesting, and, and people have, I mean, I'm going up tomorrow, but people mm. at my team, um, the Indies team, who are in Manchester already, are saying that actually the atmosphere, it's a bit like Kevin was saying, inside the hall is quite flat. It doesn't seem that anybody, apparently there was quite a sort of perfunctory standing ovation for Sajid Javid, which I think they're probably expecting a bit more, mm. you know, sort of excitement. I mean, maybe mm. that'll come mm. tomorrow mm. with sort of good old Teresa. But so the contrast between the atmosphere inside the hall, which is quite muted, and outside where you've got these thousands and thousands of people turning mm. out for Corbyn, mm. um, they've got to be careful. Obviously, it, you know, it, it's, it's quite difficult to distinguish yeah. those sort of wonderfully cheery crowds for him. Mm. against the people who were yeah. screaming Tory scum. So has the left been reawakened? Do you think that's... Is that why they're outside? Protest. Well, or protest. protest. I mean, that's but what I mean, reawakened in terms of protest and, and confidence. Yeah, but it's quite difficult for Corbyn because, of course, what the Tories will spin it as is that this is what he does best, out on the sidelines, mm. sort of being the bloke in the donkey jacket, sort mm. of speaking mm. to the, you know, singing to the choir, mm. instead of being centre stage and running the country. I thought what Kevin said was terrible interesting that uh, Corbyn was booked a year ago and nobody knew yeah. he was. It's quite a backbencher. <laughs> it's hilarious. Well, that happened. <laughs> At the, at the Labour Party conference too, you know, he turned up to some things that I'm sure when, you know, well, would not have been in the diary. Maybe about his them. team should be cancelling a few of his <laughs> diary items. Um, meanwhile, old and not wise are the new stars of reality television. Where is this set? Hello, in just a moment, the press preview as we take a look at the morning newspapers. First, though, our top stories tonight. A police officer has been killed on Merseyside after a pickup truck was driven directly at him. 34-year-old PC David Phillips was married and had two young daughters. George Osborne has announced that councils in England will be able to keep some £26 billion in business rates. And Russia has blamed bad weather after admitting that one of its jets entered Turkish airspace for several seconds. NATO has denounced what it called Moscow's irresponsible behaviour. Hello there, you're watching Sky News and the press preview. In the next half hour, we'll see what's making the newspaper headlines with the editor of The Independent on Sunday, Lisa Markwell, and the former newspaper editor, Roger Alton. Very hi, good hi. to see you both. Hello hi. to you. Hello. So let's take a look at the front pages to start with. The Metro reports on the death of PC David Phillips, who was killed after being hit by a stolen vehicle. The photo there of the officer with his wife and two young children. The Daily Mail reports the police officer was a doting father whose daughters have been left devastated by the news of his death. That story also makes the front page of the Daily Express, which says the 34-year-old didn't stand a chance when the stolen pickup truck mounted the central reservation that he was standing on. The Guardian leads with a story about the Health Secretary, Jeremy Hunt, following his comments that those on tax credits lack self-respect. The eye follows suit with Mr Hunt's view that tax credits will make the low paid in the UK work like the Chinese. The Independent also capturing the Health Secretary's comparison with Chinese workers in its headline. While the Daily Mirror reports that Mr Hunt's comments were described by Union boss Lem McCluskey as a disgraceful insult. The US, Japan and 10 other Pacific Rim nations have struck the largest trade pact in two decades. That makes the front of the Financial Times. The Telegraph looks ahead to a speech the Home Secretary, Theresa May, will make tomorrow in which she'll outline why migration is making a cohesive society in Britain impossible. The Sun alleges that BBC employees have appropriately opened accounts to bet on the winner of the Great British Bake Off, which was recorded weeks ago. While the Daily Star reports on today's news that footballer Ched Evans's rape conviction is to be reviewed by the Court of Appeal. Well, let's get the thoughts of Lisa and Roger. And in fact, starting on events in Manchester today with uh, Boris Johnson. No, not Boris Johnson. Well, it's, I mean, George there, there, there is quite a sea of events in, 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 in That's the second the, story you've chosen. Uh, anyway, the, George the Tory conference. You, you, I mean, you've got George Osborne, you've got Jeremy Hunt, yeah. you've got Theresa May, and yeah. you've got Boris, Boris, and they all, in a way, they come into a great soup they're of all, politics, which we will simplify. They are all jostling for position, but they are being rolled out in, obviously, in a very specific order. And it's interesting. The front pages are looking forward to Theresa May, but actually, George Osborne made his big 
speech today, there was a lot of quips around because he was talking very much about sort of helping working people. Mm. People saying maybe he should have gone on stage wearing a high vis jacket and a sort of mm. uh, you know hard hat, which mm. is sort of his favourite yeah. look, if you yeah. like, when he's talking to the working people. Um, yeah. But. Regardless well, I mean, of the fact that he sorry. was trying to sort of get a good message over, which was about business taxes being given to local authorities, devolving this sort of power so that small uh, businesses could have more help, mm. the message that's come across is completely different to that and it's causing ructions within the Tory party. Uh, right? over, over, but not, not from George. I think the thing to no. stress is what Osborne has done is... Um, you know, we're, we're building, he's nicked a lot of stuff from Labour yes. about we are the builders yes. and all yes. this, and the business rates yeah. uh, is, I think, a, a Labour idea. So basically, there's nothing left for Labour to do anyway. Yeah. So George has taken most of those things quite skillfully, and he made a, a, a quite assertive speech about what, what I think what the, what the government's done, done very well. Yeah. But there's a lot of other stuff rumbling mm. along yeah. in, in the background. So, should we go to Boris Johnson now, given my front power earlier then? So, so this is in uh, the Daily Mail as well. Boris clashes with ministers as he demands protect the low pay. This all rolls into tax credits, which is another part yeah. of the story we'll come yeah. to. So anyway, yeah. do continue on this one. Well, yes, he's saying, um, I mean, the, the language used in this report, you know, he's going to twist the knife in his speech tomorrow. You know, he's vying for position with George Osborne. Of course, Boris was sort of seen so much as the front runner for such a long time. Now all of the, the you know, the, yeah. the money's behind George Osborne, although brackets. Long way. Peaked, has he peaked too early, <laughs> um, as, as we discussed. But, but, um, you know, Boris is using language you wouldn't necessarily expect from a sort of Latin quoting sort of Etonian, which is, you know, we've, we must look after these people who are working very, very hard already mm. for very, very low pay. The living wage hasn't come in. The tax credits are going to be taken away. These are people, he says things like, you know, these are people who are working through the night, getting up in the small yes. hours to mm. make our country, you know, sort of continue on running yes. smoothly. And so it's really interesting no, from him. And he, he, uh, Boris is saying, you know, t uh, that we've got to protect the hardest working and the lowest pay. Mm. And the, di the dilemma about, about the removal of tax credits from working people, I think they're going to have to pull back from this because yeah. it doesn't it's not pl it doesn't play very well. Uh, it's not necessarily a good idea. They're, they seem a bit stuck to it, the government, but I think they can pull mm. back. Which mm. takes us to many of the front pages, doesn't it? There's the I, work like the Chinese. These are the comments of the health secretary. The independent, work like the Chinese. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The mirror, will make poor Brits work like the Chinese. Yeah. And then the Guardian with a slightly different take on the comments by Jeremy Hunt, welfare cuts encourage harder work. They mm. give the poorer dignity if you yes. take the tax credits away and they earn all their own money. So what exactly did he say and, 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 and how have the nuances been taken by the Well, newspapers? he's saying that this idea, this sort of central Tory line of you know if you if you take away the the reliance on benefits this recycling of money you know you pay high taxes and then you get it back in benefits if we go away from that and you have the respect mm. of the self-respect of earning more keeping more in your pocket and not having any benefits in your mm. sort of cycle of money that is better that psychologically that is better for us as a nation now there is as we were saying earlier a little bit of sympathy with that but nevertheless the the, the language that he's used at the center of it and trying to justify it by saying we should work like the Chinese. My wife is Chinese. I mean, what does that have to do with anything? He's now talking he's about saying the productivity he's... of Americans yes. and Chinese. Yeah. And he's saying he's been willfully it... misinterpreted. But I, yeah, I, I mean, he's an operator, so I'm, it is a little bit uns. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think you, I mean the the, the long term aim to, to sort of stop having benefits, but to have. Uh, to get people to work, you know, it uh, mm. seems to me rather uh, wholly commendable. And we'd be, of course, it, it, but a lot of hard-working people don't need to be told work harder. Okay, no, fine, that's true. But on the other, a lot of productivity in Britain isn't isn't great. But I do think the the, uh, the, the maybe the people that, in red car would like to be working harder. Well, well they would they like can't. to be working harder. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but this has been spun in such a way that I think Jeremy Hunt won't be very pleased, and I don't think Cameron will be particularly pleased. No. But do, he's do, a very do, smart guy. No, yeah, the tax credit cuts they sing into the Tory message of making work pay. That's the is no, that the, no, is that, no, that's the no, difficulty. They're going to have to pull back. So there's these conflicting ideas. You've got Boris saying, mm. you know, got to protect the interests of working people. You've got Hunt saying, well, let's work much harder. Both, uh, both are fair points. Sooner or later, it's going to. Happen, but they don't. They don't. Uh, uh, they're sort of contradictory. So I think. But I think the government will yeah. have to pull back. Well, we can't get away from this thing that we were told that the, the letters are going out at the beginning of December. The letters right. to the people whose, um, you know, tax credits are going to be withdrawn. And that timing is is terrible. Yeah. Yeah. And so right. there's going to have to be a very very swift U-turn or, or sort of change of the the timetable because otherwise December is going to be upon us and that is going to be very. That's so you're saying pre-Christmas pre pre cheer d yeah. doesn't exist. Yeah. And you've got, you've got Boris too, sort of positioning now mm. slightly in yes. the sort of leadership thing. Yes. Did a little bit of a twist yeah. on... Mm. Uh, 
on George, yeah. and quite how that's go, how that sort of spans maybe, out. Because it is a long, long. Well, maybe Theresa May is going to glide, through, glide the middle, through the middle, which takes us to the Times <laughs> and the Telegraph, who are both going on migration. Uh, too much migration breaks down the cohesive society mm. in Britain. So, mm. what, what is it? It's quite a strong message, isn't it? It is a very tomorrow? strong message, and it is a message designed to show the import of, of, of our Home Secretary and how she is you know, a significant character in the, in the Tory party. Um, migration, of course, is a huge you know, buzz issue. Um, however, as, as I think Kevin pointed out earlier on, she's been Home Secretary for you know, five years and they've missed the targets for migration appallingly. So really, it's, sort of, it's a little bit hubristic to say, we, we're, not, we're not going to have a cohesive society unless we can get migration under control from the person who hasn't got migration under control. But I think it's discuss. a, it's a, a discuss. It's a very good point. <laughs> but it's a rhetorical um, yeah. uh, uh, argument, and I think mm. she's trying to. Uh, she wants to um, uh, uh, include students, doesn't mm. she? In that, but, yeah, uh, that in the figures, so they're yes. effectively uh, removed yes. from the numbers. Yes, yes. yes. exactly. Yeah. I mean, education is something that's not being talked about very much, actually, so far. Immigration. Uh, it, uh, yes. No, education. Oh, education is yeah. not being talked yeah. very much um, at the moment. It's interesting how that sort of pre-election that was a really big deal. Migration's just taken over yeah. huge. Yeah. And in terms of George Osborne, I mean, some would say um, with the onset of Jeremy Corbyn mm. uh, or the arrival of Jeremy Corbyn as leader, that the Tories could have gone to the right. Mm. They could have pushed through all those things they wanted, like mm. lower taxation. Mm -hmm. What has he done? He's talked about a new centre ground, hasn't mm. he? Is that where he's positioning the Conservatives? Yes, and he's, and he's done something which is very shrewd, which is to praise Labour, as, as we no. were saying. You know, he's mm. praising a lot of what, what you know, lab, uh, Labour has done in the past. Um, and he's using quite a lot of language that you would expect of the Labour Party. So, is that, you know, is that part of the newer kind of politics? Mm, Probably good, not. Very you know. good sketch by Quentin Letts there. Yes, and, yes. And, and a good long uh, sketch too, which you make. Can you bring it up slightly? It's mm. totally good at this. It's still quite small, isn't uh, it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he made that he's a reasonable man. He praised past Labour achievements, uh, and now saying the Conservatives with the Northern, uh, you know, the Northern powerhouse and the Living wage of the National Party of Labour. So it's trying to pinch that Santa ground from Labour and I think doing it very skillfully. And he is quite, he's, a, he's not a great rhetorical speaker. He's a calm, moder, a calm sort of moderate speaker. And I think it's, I think it's, mm. I think he's doing pretty well. And what about what do you make of the scenes outside, which is uh, in the Daily Mirror, Chinese news scene, they say, picking up the Jeremy Hunt thing, but uh, walking through with angry protesters is how the papers describe that, uh, mm. that group. This huge rally, you've had a, you had a big demo yesterday uh, on Sunday, you had yeah. a big demo, mm. you've got this other big demo mm. today. Um, and it's what we discovered earlier on that Corbyn had been booked a year ago when absolutely nobody had heard of mm. him. Uh, basically, as yeah. a sort of backbencher in a corduroy jacket. Now he's a uh, potential future prime minister. And you could argue that it might, you know, he could have stood down from doing a rally uh, outside. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, I think it would have been quite sensible. He yeah. could have stood down and not come out with the stuff that I keep to my, I stick it, to my promise. And it could backfire because, of course, you know, there's been spitting, there's been egging, there's been yeah. calling people scum, all of that stuff. Yeah. You know, he, it's really difficult to, to distance himself from that because he has yeah. arrived to be outside mm -hmm. You know the, the sort of the, the security cordon said, sort of "I'm this man of the people." Well, if all, if some of those people are spitting mm. and swearing and being violent, mm. even though that's not, they would argue, the core Labour uh, you know, activists who are there for him, mm. it's quite distance, difficult to distance yeah. himself from it. So, yeah. you know, it possibly wasn't his wisest move. Yeah, mm. I agree. okay. Lots more coverage, obviously, of the Conservative Party conference through the week. Uh, Theresa May, Boris Johnson, etc. But let's move on to another matter inside the Times.